Yo! Video games. What up dudes, Matt here with a special type of video for Yo! Video Games. This time I'm going to be doing a creator spotlight on one of, if not the best composer in all of video gaming. And of course I am talking about Yasunori Mitsuda. Why now? Well, he just hit the big 5-0 birthday and now's as good as time as ever to look back at the modern Mozart of gaming and reflect on all his outstanding contributions to the medium. This won't be a full biography type of video, instead I hope to maybe shed some more light on maybe some of the lesser known soundtracks and hopefully share some of my admiration and enthusiasm for Mitsuda's many works throughout the years. So without further ado, let's get to the good stuff. Yasunori Mitsuda was born on January 21st, 1972 in Tokuya. Yama, Japan, which I have no idea where that is. Apparently he was a bit of a wild child and loved roaming countrysides and mountains, a love which would continue even today as he is still an avid nature lover and camper. I would expect nothing less from someone who's written some of the field themes that he has. Interestingly, he wasn't always writing music. His family tried to get him to take piano lessons at five, but reportedly hated practicing and quit by six. So let that be a lesson to any discouraged piano players out there. The man who wrote the beginning of our memory even struggled to practice. Interestingly enough, Mitsuda actually has a knack for sports and ran track and field in high school, and even wanted to become a pro golfer at one point. What changed his career forever actually happened in high school when he became a bit of a movie lover. Citing being particularly impressed with the works of Henry Mancini and Vangelis' score for the original Blade Runner, and while I obviously can't insert that music here, do I even need to? Tears in the Rain is already playing in your head. But the big film that made him decide he wanted to become a composer was Railman, or possibly The Railroad Man. Actually, this sent me down a weird rabbit hole, and I have no idea what this film or its accompanying soundtrack is exactly. It's either a short film from 1976 with virtually almost no information on the internet, or a black and white Italian film from 1956. Whatever the actual source of this mysterious film, it was, along with Blade Runner, a major catalyst for setting his sights on music. After high school, he then traveled to Tokyo to attend a relatively low-key junior college of music. Being a somewhat low-prestige school, Mitsuda's professors would actually be playing music gigs part-time and take him along as basically free manual labor, but it did get him a good inside view of the actual music industry. And now we get to the video game part. Through the college, Mitsuda began an internship at Wolf Team around 1990. And if you know who Wolf Team is, congratulations, you are a video game turbo nerd. Wolf Team was an offshoot of Telenet games that started in 1987 and made a lot of early Genesis titles such as Valis, Ernest Evans, and El Viento, but mainly a lot of shmups like Soul Feast, Granada, and Final Zone. While I did say they worked on early Genesis games, in Japan they were perhaps more well known for their work on the Sharp. X 6800 series of PCs, which, if you want more information on that, you should head on over to GameSack. What most of you probably would know Wolf Team 4, though, is what they would become in the mid to late 90s, the Tales of Studio. Mitsuda, however, was an intern for none other than prog rock man himself, Matoi Sakuruba, which, if you don't know, he has composed nearly every Tales of, Star Ocean, Valkyrie Profile, and Mario Golf and Tennis game. Also some other shit like Shining Force 1 through 3 and Golden Sun, but why open those old wounds? Mitsuda's internship with Sakuruba was pretty interesting to say the least. Apparently the two wouldn't talk much as Matoya would be busting out song after song in rapid succession, which still feels true to this day, and would hand Mitsuda a score and ask him to recreate it on FM Sound for PC-98 and PC-88 games. Though Mitsuda doesn't lament this at all, in fact he was happy at the time to just be learning how to work with technology and how games are made. After a year-long internship, Mitsuda would then be asked by a teacher at the college about getting an actual job. The teacher then apparently flipped through a Famitsu all the way to the back and said, why don't you apply here? So Mitsuda sent his resume and three demo songs to Squaresoft. After two weeks, he followed up with a call and wouldn't you know, Nobuo Uematsu of all people responded with the request to hear more songs. So he sent three more and got a quick call to an interview with Nobuo himself as well as Minoru Akayo of Squaresoft 
with his work. According to Mitsuda, the interview was a disaster, where he admitted to not having played Final Fantasy or having any long-term career goals with Squaresoft and seeing it more as a stepping stone. Which, let's just take a moment to breathe this in. Mitsuda had no actual musical composing experience, yet somehow gets an interview with one of the biggest names in history and flubs it spectacularly and still gets hired and would not long after would compose the best goddamn soundtrack on the Super NES. Anyways, the next two years he would be doing sound engineering for games like Final Fantasy V, Romancing Saga 2, and Secret of Mana. What is sound engineering, you might ask? Well, it's stuff like creating the Dragon's Roar in Final Fantasy V and whatnot. It's not actual writing and composing music. According to him, his salary was pretty meager and not really paying the bills, nor satisfying his creative itch much. Which ultimately led him to tell Hironobu Sakaguchi, a vice president at the time, that he wanted to compose or quit. Sakaguchi just happened to have a pretty cool little project starting up called Chrono Trigger. The story from here gets a lot more familiar, though still crazy. Mitsuda definitely poured his heart into this one, working days on end, falling asleep at the office and having two faraway times come to him in a dream. And I can't be the only one who gets some crazy Cloud Atlas vibes from this, right? Going in and out of the hospital with ulcers from overwork and a hard drive crash that erased 40 in-progress tracks from existence, which, holy cow, let me into the multiverse to hear those. Uematsu even had to step in at one point and finish about 10 pieces of music for Chrono Trigger, with Boss Battle 1 being composed by Noriko Matsuda. Or Matsueda, sorry. After Chrono Trigger, Mitsuda would then compose for front mission Gun Hazard with Uematsu, which sadly never released out here. Mitsuda apparently also overworked himself into being sick again on this project. After that was contributions to Tobol No. 1, among many other Square composers. Also, Radical Dreamers for the Super Famicom Satellaview, which also never released here. But his next major project would be for a brand new IP from the former graphics director at Squaresoft and writer at Square, Tetsuyu Takahashi and Soria Saga. The game? Xenogears. Which, if you hadn't taken notice of Mitsuda's composing already by Chrono Trigger, there was no denying his talent any longer by Xenogears. By July of 1998, Mitsuda decided to leave Squaresoft and become a freelance composer, whose first gig was... Mario Party! Yep! Mario Party 1 on the N64 was composed by the man who brought you Chrono Trigger and Xenogears, and would set a standard for the Mario Party series that would quickly be dropped afterwards. Also in the following year, he composed a little title for Squaresoft called Chrono Cross, which, if I was in charge of Square at the time, and I heard the OST to Chron Chrono Cross, knowing that he was an employee only a year prior, I'd be pretty pissed at someone for letting that happen. Other projects following his freelance years were contributions to the soundtrack for Bomberman 64 Second Attack, Legend of Lagaya 2, as well as taking a prominent role as the main composer for Tsunagi Atonement and Shadow Hearts 1 and 2. His next big project would come with composing with the London Philharmonic Orchestra for Xeno Saga. The first project from other former Squaresoft employees who had left to found their own studio called Monolithsoft. You might have heard about them from me before. Which is a strange soundtrack to be sure, not for its quality, but for how it's implemented in the game. The OST itself is amazing, but playing the game is normally dead quiet, except for the sounds of footsteps and space machine noises. It's like being trapped and watching a Deep Space Nine marathon. The 2000s would be quite an interesting period for Mitsuda, with more spooky sounding stuff like Tsunagi and Shadow Hearts, but also some really wild stuff like Graffiti Kingdom, which sounds like Mitsuda stepping in for Grant Kirkhope and 10,000 Bullets, which goes so hard on the jazz, you might be duped into thinking it's lost tracks from Cowboy Bebop.
That's not to say he was all experimental all the time. Titles like Deep Labyrinth and overseeing projects like Luminous Arc and Arc Rise Fantasia definitely were more traditional Mitsuda sounding stuff. Also, I will never stop asking about Mitsuda's contributions to Sands of Destruction. It's such a small scale, small budget DS RPG, yet the title screen is one of the most hauntingly beautiful and high quality title themes of all time. Someone, please let me ask Mitsuda himself about the track Times Arm. I have to know, why is it so beautiful? It still keeps me up at night. The late 2000s would bring Mitsuda into collaboration with both Sakurai for some tracks for Smash Bros. Brawl and Kid Icarus Uprising, as well as Level 5, where he would become a mainstay composer for Inazuma 11, a long-running series about kids in a soccer league, and as with most of Mitsuda projects, the music is way too good for the franchise it's attached to. Well, that's probably a bit mean, since we only got the first game released as a download-only title on the 3DS eShop six years after its initial release in Japan and none of the other titles. I suppose I should also bring up the fact that Mitsuda has an entirely composed game music. He's done anime as well, such as Inazuma 11, the anime, Black Butler, and recently, Irina, the cosmonaut vampire. Also, he's done remix albums for both Chrono and Xenogears, as well as some wholly original albums such as Sailing to the World and Kirai, both of which are pretty damn fantastic and worth a listen. In the last decade, Mitsuda has followed up with some absolute stunners, even if the games themselves weren't all that memorable. Looking at you, Valkyria Revolution. Interestingly, despite his long history with the company, it wasn't until 2017 that Mitsuda would finally compose for a Final Fantasy title, and that would finally come with the DLC to Final Fantasy XV Episode Ignis. It was totally worth the wait. Twenty seventeen would be a huge year for Mitsuda in general, as not only did the sweeping score for Valkyria Revolution start it off, both Final Fantasy XV DLC and Xenoblade 2 would end it in December. While Xenoblade 2 was a collaborative effort with Tomoro Kudo and Hiroyo Yamanaka of Ace, Kenji Hiramatsu, and the criminally underrated Manami Kiyoda, Mitsuda himself did compose 25 tracks, as well as write orchestral versions that would be performed by the Kanagawa Philharmonic Orchestra, as well as feature Irish Celtic Choir Anunya, the Bratislava Symphony Choir, and vocal songs by Jen Bird. Of course, all of this work would be completely snubbed by a musically deaf Western gaming media. Looking at you and your judges, Jeffrey! This would be followed up with some jazzy new tracks for Xenoblade 2 Torn of the Golden Country the following year, and then a fantastic 20th anniversary concert tour for Chrono Cross in Japan, which just happened to be attended by yours truly, <coughs> Since then, indie devs from around the globe have reached out for collaborations with Mitsuda for titles such as Edge of Eternity and the upcoming Sea of Stars by Sabotage Studios. Also, Mitsuda has spent a large part of 2021 deep in production on... something. Something with the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra, Bratislava Symphony Choir, and Irish singing group Anunya. Please, for the love of God, let it be Xenoblade 3! But whatever it ends up being, I have no doubt it will sound amazing, as in the 26 years since Mitsuda started composing for Chrono Trigger, he has yet to let me down. At the end of the day, I truly hope he has an incredible 50th birthday, and that you enjoyed this little dive into some of the history of Yasunori Mitsuda and his soul-healing music contributions to the world. Here's to another 50 years of amazing music, starting from now to faraway times.